so welcome to this tutorial so as you can see I have my two yards of my vintage material most people call it polish cutting and most people call it shed material so it it depends on whatever it is called where you are so the first thing we'll be doing is to confirm the height of the material which is 30 by folding that means this is 2 yards by 60 I repeat again 30 by folding that means this is 2 yards by 60 so, so since this is 30 by folding I'll be splitting it into two so I'll be cutting off what I'll be using for the shorts which will be 24 inches and what is left will be used for the shirt because in achieving our aim which is using two yards to sew a shirt and a shirt we have to split it from the beginning which is what I'll be doing now so I'll be splitting this material into two so that will be a yard by 24 and a yard by what is left from removing 24 from 60 which is supposed to be I get I think 36 so that's for the short and this is for the shirt straight to business we fold by 4 inches so as you can see I'm cutting sing single because the material is not iron so cutting double would just mean both cuttings won't be the same so our body size is 40 which is 10 so I'll be adding additional 1 inch and I'll be adding that all through so initially I marked the length of my material upwards so the next thing I'll be doing is to join all the points of my marked 11 so the 11 I marked I'll be joining all the points then up to the height of the shirt I want you can choose whatever height you want I mean that's the shirt length so that is mine so as you can see I used 30 so I used 30 because whatever I'll be adding for the back will be what I'll be using for the folding allowance so 30 is my length so the first thing I did then is to measure two and a half inches then I'll measure four and a half inches downwards so I'll make a curve to both points so that's my back now I'll be taking my shoulder slant downwards but the thing about cutting shirt I'm sewing it perfectly is when cutting you don't take your exact measurements so you see that for stand now so my back is 9 but I'll be taking as much as 11 now I'll be marking out 10 inches for my under bust which I'll also be using for my armhole so I'll take 2 inches mind you everything I'm doing here now is still based on SX when I start joining you see the way I reduce everything to my perfect size so it's a straight line cut so there's no need to adjust the body to any shape so the first thing I'll be doing will be to cut out the front piece and this front piece is single mind you so I'll be using this single to, uh, front piece to cut out the other part of the front piece because I want to make sure all my lines on the material align with the other part that is why I'm cutting it single I don't want any deviation so I'll be making a notch this notch I would this notch I took now I'll be sewing it inward by one and a half inch so one and a half inches later so now I'm using one part to cut out the other part because I don't want any mistake I want to be sure of what I'm doing so that is why I'm placing one part on the other part if if not, I was supposed to fold both and cut together, but I just want to be sure about my alignment. So you can see the green line, the flowers, everything has to align. So I will get to the notch part, take my notch. Like I told you, I will be sewing that notch inwards by one and a half inch inches. So 
so like i said earlier i'll be sewing that knot inwards that is inside by one and a half inches and then i'll fold and iron so the front part is ready so that is the left hand side and this is the right the right part of the front so as you can see all lines are lined perfectly well so our aim is achieved so like i explained later i'll be sewing that notched part one and a half inwards which you can see i've done and i've also sewed the four inches i folded and i've also made button holes so that is just to make the work faster so like i explained earlier i'll be sewing one and a half inch of that notch inwards which you can see there at the neck so the bended uh, four inches i've also i've also made my sewing then i've also made my button holes so now the, the most important part of achieving your aim in sewing a vintage material that has a line is the button fixing so as you can see i will pass the needle from the button hole to the other part of the material because i want it to align so after that like i always explain you don't need to tie your thread when you are handling um, stitches you just drag it pass it to the material once when you pass it twice it becomes firm there is no need so if you are not sure you can pass it for the third time you don't need to tie it so after doing that the next thing i will do will be to pass the thread through my button holes and fix the button so as you can see i've done that so i'll be fixing the button so i have to make sure it aligns so if that first button aligns so from there i can carry on doing the remaining so as you can see it does so i'll be using that pattern to continue and fixing the buttons for the other button holes already created so which you can see I've done so I'm also stitching the neck now this neck I'm stitching is because I want the back cutting neck the back cutting of my neck to be perfect that is why I'm stitching that neck there's no button there it's just hand stitch so after fixing all my buttons and stitching the neck, I'll fold into two. So after folding into two, I'll be using this folded part of the front to cut out the back. So as you can see, the, the, the material is well ironed now. So whatever space I give there is what I'll be folding at the bottom of the material so that space I gave there now is almost two inches which means my joining at the top which will be half inch plus my folding at the bottom which will be one and a half will make my shed come back to the 30 inches I measured so like I said whatever space you give at the bottom is what you will use in terms of sewing the shoulder line and folding the down line so after cutting that you extend it downwards for both down line to meet each other then you fold the shoulder of the back to that of the front so you can cut out the neck of the back so which is what i'll be doing now so i'll fold so you can see why i stitched the the tip of the neck of the front piece so that I can cut the neck of the back piece at ease. So after notching, you will use your scissors to cut a curve to the point of notch. So that curve is from the folded line. You can see that this folding I'm making now, that curve be gone from this folded line so after folding i will use the front to trim the back mind you everything i'm doing now is still of excess because i because i told you my body size is 40 
and I used 11 which is 44 so from the button hole allowance I've removed to the other trimming of the body I should be able to get 40 later so 11 from 44 to 11 will be easy for me so the first thing I'll be doing now is to sew the shoulder line which I have done so you, as you can see we've sewn the shoulder line so the next thing now is to make sure all my alignments are in line so after sewing the shoulder line I will make sure all my alignments are in line before I start trimming so I'll trim mind you everything is still of excess size so I'm just trimming so if you are doing yours, you might not use 11, you might use 12 if your body is 40, just to make sure you have ease of trimming. So, you, so I'm removing the stitch. So as you can see, I've removed that stitch. So the next thing I'll be doing is to check my measurements because the center of the shirt now is the bottom line. As you can see, that line that, that leads to the neck that middle line down the bottom line that's my center line so you trim the neck if need be so now I will be taking my measurements from that line that center line of the neck so instead of 11 which I took now my new measurement now is nine and a half because my back is nine so my body now we're taking ten and a half downwards, ten and a half on the other side too. So luckily for me, it's already ten and a half at the tip of the the chest, but the body parts are all bigger than ten and a half. So I'll be marking ten and a half, which I'll be cutting a straight line to the tip of the chest, which is already ten and a half. So I'm starting my trimming from the body. So as you can see, I'm trimming bit by bit. So I'm just cutting down based on the line. So I will make sure everything from the center line, which is the bottom, the bottom line, is ten and a half. So wherever it looks bigger than ten and a half, I'll trim. So everything becomes ten and a half. You can, you should know how to do that on your own. This is how I know how to do mine. So just make sure your button your button your button itself gong gong is your your center line I'm saying gong gong <laughs> so your button is actually your center line so you keep checking to you make sure every part of the body is ten and a half that's ten and a half on the right side ten and a half on the left side because you'll be removing half on both sides for stitching now I will also be making a video of how to cut a shirt and sew a shirt with double stitches using a single needle machine but for now we are not doing double stitching on the side we are doing single stitching so straight to the chest so my chest so for my ammo curve to my other ammo curve I usually use 17 and a half so I'll be trimming to that effect so after trimming one part and making sure the curve is perfectly well from the chest to the marked out back you use it to cut the other part so I've already marked out the shoulder of the other part which is not recorded on the video so I'm just using one part to follow the other part then the next thing you'll be doing is making sure that our 17 and a half is 17 and a half. So you'll be removing half inch from the front armhole. So as you can see, I'm cutting out only the front part of the armhole. And I'll be doing that on the other side too. If you are not sure, after cutting one part, you can open your material, then use one part to cut out the other part, or you can just do it the way I'm doing it now, which is risky, I guess. So I'll be explaining opening it and using one part to cut out the other part when I'll be cutting the sleeve. 
because I'll also be removing the same thing. So I'll measure six and a half for the sleeve. So my curve should meet that six inches. Sorry, not six and a half, six inches. So as you can see, it makes it easier for me to just make my curve if I know where the curve is going. Since I know it's going to six inches, I'll just make my curve and cut out like that. So because we are using two yards, there is no surplus of material for me to use just plain white. So as you can see, the other part of my sleeve is containing a little bit of flowering designs. So this will even allow me to make my sleeve as long as possible because I have to fold out the flowering part. So you choose your length of sleeve and your round, your round arm, you add half inch and you cut, which is what we did there. So after doing that, we'll go straight to... So you know when we were cutting the shoulder, we measured 10 inches down from the shoulder to the to the chest. When we were cutting the sleeve also, we, the height of the sleeve is 10 inches. But for the fact that the shoulder, you'll be removing 2 inches for the slant, that is what gave us the excess we are removing from the sleeve now. So this sleeve you are seeing is 10 inches. But there was no slant removed, just as the slant was removed from the shoulder of the bodice. So why I, why we do that is because your sleeve should always your, your the round measurement of your sleeve should always be bigger than the round measurement of your your body armhole. Because if the reverse is the case, <laughs> you already have a big problem. So I've already reduced my sleeve to the measurement of the armhole. Next thing I'll be doing will be to fold and sew. So for this video, I'll be folding out the the flowering designs on one part of the sleeve because I want both to be identical. If both are identical, then if one doesn't have flower, then the other shouldn't have flower also. So the next thing I'll be doing will be to fold, press, and sew. So after folding, I'll press with my iron and I'll sew, which I've already done here so for final preparation of the sleeve i'll be removing half inch from one part just like i did for the bodice so i'm removing half inch and mind you the half inch i'm moving will be starting from the tip of the top to the tip of the bottom of the armhole so i'm moving half inch from the tip so I'll be turning it this way, which I explained for the borders that you can also do it this way. Open your material, use one part to cut the other part. So as, I, as I'm doing now, which you can see, I'm using one part of the material to cut out the other part. Now this half inch I removed from the front part, when I'm placing it on the sleeve, I'll, it will be front to front and back to back, the removed part to the removed part and the other to the other, which I've already done here. So as you can see, we've attached our sleeve. So like I said earlier, this tutorial, I will not be doing double stitch on this side. It's just single stitching. So I'll just sew it inwards. And that will be that. So when I'm sewing, I'll be careful of my lines. My lines have to align. So I was already careful when I'm cutting, so it won't give me problem when I'm sewing. So as you can see, I've sewn inwards. So I'll be turning it outwards for you to see. My lines are in alignment. That's the most important thing. So when you're making a video like this, the most important thing is for your lines to be aligned. So the next thing is the color. So I'll be taking my measurement from that notched part to the other part. I told you earlier when I was cutting, I, I, I sewed inwards one and a half. Then after sewing, I notched. And that was why it was able to be opened like that. So I measured that. So I'll be cutting my I'll be cutting my collar to the that size, which I've already done. So if you don't really understand, because I don't want the video to be that much lengthy, I'll be making a video of how to cut a vintage collar. And I'll be posting it soon. So after cutting on the stay, you 
you gum the state to the material then you fold so as you can see i've already folded half inch all through so as you can see the back piece i'll be turning is joined because the material wasn't much so the back piece will be half inch longer than the front piece downwards that's half inch longer than the front piece downwards so as you can see i've sewn both sides as you can see the back piece is half inch longer than the front piece downwards so you fold this way and sew anything you are sewing that needs a sharp edge fold before you sew so after folding i've turned it inwards and iron as you can see my sharp edges are so like i said that the back piece should be half inch longer than the front piece downwards so i will start my sewing from that notch edge so i'll place so i'll place the part of that collar to the notched edge like that and sew to the other part so after sewing it should be very easy for me to just close up with the other collar so the collar will so like you see i've already sewn so the collar will be able to stand firm because of the stay because when while cutting the collar i just cut the stay not even the material so i gum the stay on the material so you put it inside the sewing allowances inside then you sew on top you do that round and just like that your your collar for your your shirt is ready so as you can see i've done that but this is fresh from the oven i have not pressed so you fold so after folding you press and when you press it becomes firm because of the gum stay you use in cutting out the collar mind you i used gum stay because i want it to be strong so as you can see that is that So you can see that is that. So as you can see, I started my my vintage shirt from button before even doing anything because I want it to be perfect. So that's that. So the next thing we'll be doing now will be to cut out the the short. So you mark out two inches from the bottom. You make your line. Now I'm cutting my short this way because I'm trying to manage the material. There are many ways to sew, to sew short. I think over 100 ways so i think my short length i'll be using is 20. not that my short length is 20 but for this video i'm using 20 because i want my my short to be above my knee so i took two inches downwards then i'm measuring 20 from those that two inch mark points upwards so the next thing i'll be doing will be to take two inches upwards again so those two inches I took downwards and upwards will be used for my folding. So I'll be folding it downwards and I'll also be folding it upwards. The, fold, the folding part upwards would be what we contain the rubber, the elastic rubber I'll be using for the waist. So I'll take my crotch allowance which will be 11 and half. You can use 12 if you're bigger than me or even 13 if you're way bigger. So I'll be using 11 and a half. As you can see, my figure, I'm not that big. I don't want something that will look so protruded. So for a 40 hip size, I think 11 and a half is perfect for a shot. So I'll be marking out 10 inches for my hip all round. Even for the waist, I'll be marking out 10 inches. Then I'll come to my tie, which is 23, mark out 11 and a half. Take my excess in one and a half, you can use two. So my, my tie too, I'll take the measurement, add extra two. Not my tie now, my knee measurement. So I after taking the measurement, I added extra two. Because this shot is not the type that will be penciled. This is something that will be very free, if not even too free. 
So I took extra two from that extra two inches and marked with the crotch. So from the crotch, that's what we got. So I'll be cutting now to my extra two. So that's that. So as you can see, this the way I'll be sewing this short is I think the most easiest way to sew short in the whole world. So this is the most easiest way to sew short in the world. So I'll be taking my notch point. So I'm trying to take my notch point because when I'm joining the front piece and the back piece, I might need it. So I'll be using the front piece to cut out the back piece. So by cutting the front piece, I added no sewing allowance. So my sewing allowance will be added to the back piece. So as you can see, I'm extending the material to make sure I have an excess of two inches because my sewing allowance all round will be two inches because half inch into four places is two inches. So after doing that, I'll use so after I'm taking two inches on that side, I'll just cut out the curve parts on this other side. So you can see, like I said, this is the easiest way to sew a short. The easiest way in the world to sew a short. I don't know of any other way. So I finished cutting out my front and my back piece, just like that. Now this is what is left. And you won't believe this is what I actually used for one of the sleeve of the shirt. <laughs> so because this is what is left after cutting out the whole material. So let's go back straight to the business of the day. So I took one inch downwards from the front piece. After taking one inch downward, I will make a line to the edge of the waist. So for both of my front piece, I'll be cutting one inch downwards. So this piece, I joined both of the front piece together because I want the front part of my waist to be lower than the back part of the waist because that's the way the shape of the body is. Which you can see I did here. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to mark out the two, in, the two inches I, I marked out for the folding of the waist. So from this marked out point now, you will take your measurement downwards either by half inch or one inch and decide where your pocket will begin from so for this tutorial i think i'm using one inch so i take my pocket measurements which is normally people use seven but i like to use eight so i use eight because after sewing there will be some reductions in size so if you check the whole reduction everything comes back to, to seven so i like to use eight when cutting so after doing that, after joining multiple pieces together, we've gotten a pocket. So you place your pockets front to front. Make sure your placing is at least one and a half or even more higher than that notched part. So you make sure it is one and a half or even more. So you sew from that notched part to the other notched part. After placing, so after placing, that is after sewing, that is what I got. So now, since only one part of the material is notched, we we'll use your scissors to notch the other part, so which is the pocket, so it can be bended inwards easily. So you notch to the original size of the former notch. So after notching, you open it like that. So after opening, you can see what we've got. So you make a top stitch by half inch. So after making our top stitch, which is which you can see here by half inch, you press. You can see it there. Now you take it inward. You pick it inwards like that. You pick it inwards. Then you sew. So after sewing, that is what we got. So after sewing, we turn it outwards now. So as you can see, we'll turn it outward back. Use your scissors or whatever tool you have to make sure everything comes out because you'll be top stitching the bottom part of that pocket too. 
so you top stitch and iron two so you top stitch that bottom part of the pocket you're not sewing it on the on the, the shuttle you just top stitch separately and after doing that you will sew both pieces together make sure it is less than half inch because your sewing allowance is half inch so after doing all that we've gotten what we want so as you can see we've top stitched so everything is held firmly well even the pocket we've also top stitched so the next thing we'll be doing now will be to sew the front piece or the back piece and while doing this like i said earlier our alignment is very important all our lines should be in alignment so you just make your top stitch so while making your top stitch when you get to the pocket part you sew the inner piece of the pocket not on top of the pocket so you, you can open your pocket so as you can see we've done that our alignments are in are intact so the next thing we'll be doing will be to sew the other parts we'll sew that part so we've done that and we've turned it outward for both so the under part which is the crotch notch you just join both you can join it with a pin you can join it with a pin now i want to show you how to make your opening so you can ready to pass your rubber or your rope so you sew from the back so that's the back you sew from that back to the notch part continue you will sew now and you will stop one inch before the line before your two inches line you must you must mark out because that line is no longer two inches so you must mark out your two inches you stop then you continue from that two inches line so you can get that opening so that is that so as you can see we've already sewn everything so as you can see i stop one inch before that two inches line so i have my opening there then i continue my stitching from the two inches line like i said that i already took one inch downward so you make sure you mark your two inches at that front part you stop one inch before the two inches line you continue on the two inches line so you can get your opening so there's already an opening there now so now you open you open it and you sew it you sew it on top like that good down then you go up back so you sew it like that just to hold it firm so that when you are bending your rope doesn't or when you're passing your rope it doesn't get resisted by that so there's no resistance when you're passing your rubber so after doing that the next thing we are doing is to fold the down the down and sew which we've already done so you choose how you want to fold me i fold exactly the way i folded the the shirt and so so they will be of the same size so after folding and sewing the top two that is what you got so you remember the top we are folding the two that line we we took the two inches line we took around is what we are folding so even the pockets were firmly held by the folding as you can see here uh, make sure your pockets are firmly held that is why you take one and a half inch when you are fixing your pocket if you took one and if you took one inch when you are notching the pocket if you took half inch when you are notching the pocket you should take one or even more inch when you are fixing the pocket so the next thing we'll be passing our rubber so there is no stress on that just pass your rubber after passing it you sew it you pass it round then you sew there's no really big deal about that so please if you haven't subscribed to the channel subscribe there will be more interesting videos coming up i really appreciate you watching from the beginning to the end so like we've already showed you the outlook of the clothes from the beginning i will also be wearing this short at the end of this video now for you to see
so i just want you to see fresh from the oven so as you can see everything is everything is good so please like subscribe share and god bless you for watching from the beginning to this point let's keep learning people let's keep learning thank you